Now, look at all these companies. How many can you recognize? I'm pretty sure you can recognize some of these big, big names over there and probably you are one of their customers. So today, what if I tell you that you have a company and all these companies shown in this slide are your customers? Would that be good? And what's more, would it be even better if when these companies revenue grow, your revenue would grow too? And in particular, look at some of these names. We have Facebook, Spotify, eBay, Grab, Uber, Dropbox, TransferWise, where some of these customers are experiencing really high growth rates. And when their revenue grows, your revenue grows too. Wouldn't it be nice? Hi there. Welcome to the research series by MoneyWise Smart, where we discuss great growth companies to invest in and own for the long term. Before we start, please hit the like button below so that the YouTube algorithm can help more people like yourself to learn more about investing. Today, we are going to discuss about an interesting Dutch payments company called Adyen, and we'll just give you a high level overview of this company's business first. The standard disclaimer first, whatever we are going to discuss today is by no means any investment recommendations and should be treated as for educational purposes only. So we have done a deep dive analysis into this company to look at the various aspects of the company, including the business itself, its moods and competitive advantages, the industry that it is in and the competition is facing there, the risk, the management, its financials and valuation of the company. But today we are just going to give you a very quick overview of this company to see if it interests you. And if you are interested, you can look into the detailed analysis in our research series. So Adyen is an acquirer or maybe you can call it payment service provider to PSP. Now let's have a look at one quick video first to understand Adyen's role as an acquirer. Enjoy. What's an acquirer? Good question. It's a bank that helps you accept payments. It routes transactions via the card networks to the shopper's bank and asks for approval. It then collects the money or tells you why it was declined. All in the blink of an eye. It can be complicated, but it doesn't have to be. Adyen manages this whole process from start to finish, making it easy for you to sell to shoppers anywhere. So just some quick statistics about Adyen first before we go into its business. Adyen is a Dutch payments company founded in 2006. 12 years later, it went public in Europe, in Amsterdam in 2018. And then as of August 2020, its market cap was around Euro 45 billion. As at the end of 2019, it has more than 1,000 employees in more than 20 offices. And if you take the market cap and divide by the number of employees, that means each, each employee was worth around Euro 40 million market cap per employee. That's a really big amount. And at the end, vision is to have a singular focus in trying to remove frictions in the payments industry, even that payments are so complex. And for the name itself, it's actually a Surinamese name for starting over again. And there's a reason behind it. And we'll share with you the story of Adyen, how it got founded later. So Adyen basically provides a full payments stack services. And we'll explain what that means shortly. And it does it at a global scale covering most of the countries in the world. So let's look at 
where Adyen stands in the payments value chain. Let's start with a crash course 101 into payments first. So imagine today you are a shopper and you go to an e-commerce site, say maybe Amazon or eBay, you buy a product. So, and then you pay the merchant. And you paid it maybe using a credit card, debit card, or whatever local payment methods that you have depending on where you live. So that payment will be accepted by a gateway. And once that payment is accepted, the data will have to flow through a whole different chain of the payments value chain where different parties are involved. So at the start, risk management would have to be done to see whether your transaction is a fraudulent transaction or not. And then it has to be processed. And it also has an acquirer behind it where acquirer is the acquiring entity representing the merchant. For example, it could be a bank where the merchant has its bank account with. And after all this, it will get sent to the card networks, the popular ones in the world being Visa and MasterCard and maybe Union Pay. Then the network will send the data to the issuers which is actually the usually the bank representing you as a consumer. So for example, if you are using a credit card, that credit card might be issued by the issuer. They'll, they'll see whether you have enough money in your bank account, whether your credit card still has limit. And then if they approve it, the data will flow back all the way to the acquirer and then the money will get sent to the merchant. So this chain here, as we can see here, there are a few functions. And some of these functions can be handled by different parties. In fact, most of the time, it will be handled by different parties using different technologies or platforms. And if you add on the layer of different geographies in the world, then you suddenly have so many different parties just dealing with one transaction. And their technologies and platforms are all different. They, even though they speak to each other, they don't speak to each other perfectly. So no one actually has the full visibility of the whole data across this chain, which means a lot of useful data are lost. And that's where Adyen comes in, where it tries to provide the whole chain, connecting the merchants directly to the card networks. So if all these features are performed on the same platform by the same company, then all the data could be retained there and you can do a lot of things with the data. For example, you can use it to improve the authorization rate of the card transaction. Or also you will be able to understand the shopper profile better and that can be used to produce many insights and initiatives for the merchant. So we talk about conversion just now, where we'll just give you a quick understanding of this. So if you look at here for online payments or rather CMP payments, standing for card not present payments where the merchant actually doesn't see the card. So when you pay online, you don't even need to know the card, see the card, I mean, present the card. You just need to know your credit card number and the security code, etc. Then you can make the payment. So in that world, actually a lot of payment transactions actually gets declined because someone in the whole chain is worried about that transaction being a fraudulent or invalid transaction. So that one in five is a lot. Imagine if you're a merchant, you're selling something, but 20% of your payments from your customers get rejected. And then the customers will probably go to somewhere else to buy. So there's a big problem there. In the offline world, when we pay using the point of sales devices in shops or restaurants, that world is still better. The conversion is much better than in the high 90% because in the past, a lot of money has been spent in developing the technology there. But in the online world, it's, it's a total mess. And that's where Adyen comes in because it has all the data. It can actually help to improve the authorization rate to make sure that different parties in the chain would accept the payment. Because imagine when you're dealing with so many acquirers, so many risk management companies, processors and issuers, all of them have different prefer preferences and their own algorithm to decide whether one transaction is fraudulent or not. And Adyen has a lot of solutions to go and maximize and optimize all these data combination to make sure that they get accepted the most. And we'll go into detail how Adyen actually does it. 
in the more detailed discussions in our research series. And but at the same time, of course, you can always improve your conversion rate by letting all the more transactions pass through. But what if some of them are actually risky, are actually fraudulent? Then you risk facing fraudulent activities and chargebacks from these people. So it's not just about the highest conversion, but you have to make sure that you're controlling your risk too. And Alien has many different products to deal with this. For example, it's Checkout, it's Revenue Accelerate and Revenue Protect solutions, which we'll go through in detail. But the overall point is just Adyen offers this benefit of improved conversion at a lower risk to the merchants, which is very useful for them. The other point is also Adyen is very global and currently it accepts more than 250 payment methods here, local payment methods. Just look at this, how many can you actually recognize? I don't know about you. I mean, I'm not in the payments industry. I don't work there, but based on that, I probably can recognize less than one quarter of this. Yep. And for context, this is really a lot. So globally, there are probably more than 400 pay local payment methods and it's, it's just growing as we go. Every market has their own preferences. So Adyen actually supports a lot of methods and in the world, only a competitor called WorldPay, which is a very large global legacy payment service provider, it provides more methods than Adyen now at more than 300 methods. And then coming at second is Adyen together with another large legacy player called First Data. And then behind that is global payments and for the remaining entities, they are far behind. No one actually accepts so much payment methods. And so to give a bit of context on the local payment methods is very different and fragmented across the whole world in different markets. So in Germany, people actually prefer to not pay using credit card. And you see methods like SEPA, direct debit, software, and gyro pay. In China, as most of you know, Alipay and WeChat Pay, which are like wallets are very dominant over there. In Netherlands, you have this interesting payment method called IDEAL. And in Brazil, people like to pay using credit card and in installments. And Boletos, which is their own local payment method, is very popular there too, for the, especially for the underbank. So imagine if today you are Nike, you are Sephora, I don't know, you are Under Armour, you are Uber, you are doing business in all these different countries in the world. And then you need to accept all these different payment methods in the world. Because, I mean, if you use a payment method, say just a standard credit card in all markets, they might not be popular. The local players might be able to compete better than you because they offer those local payment methods that are more popular. So you have to go and find parties to help you to accept all these payments. And historically, if you look at the diagram on the left, what happens is you would have to deal with many different players in different markets. So you could be dealing with 50 parties or even more than 100 parties signing more than 100 different contracts. And all of them are using different technologies and platforms. So on your side, you don't actually have a full visibility of all the data because all the data don't speak to each other. And then if you are selling in shops, so you are using point of sale devices, those hardware will be different across the market. So depending on who is your acquirer or payment service provider in that market. So it's very complex for you to manage all these. That's where Adyen comes in, where if you go with Adyen, you just have to sign one contract and they can provide you all those payment methods in more than 180 countries in the world, which they are in now. And because it's all handled by the same person, same company, same on the same platform, integrated seamlessly, then you have a dashboard that actually you open it up. You can see all the data across different markets. You can see someone who has bought something from you in the US when he traveled to Europe, he buys something else. So you have a lot of data for you to manipulate. That's the benefit of Adyen. And just back end, it helps you to save a lot of cost too because you don't have to manage so many different parties signing contract with them. You just have to deal with one. Or even imagine if you're a small and medium business or your business is not large yet, you're in 20 countries in the world now. Next time when you expand to 50, you do need to go and find 30 new companies to do 
payments for in those markets for you. You just need to call up agent, oh, I'm in this new country now. Can you accept it for me? And then yes. And because you are already on this platform, everything just flows smoothly. You don't need to integrate any new technology again, which can be complex for some of the competitors in terms of technological platform integration with your business system. So this is our team. I'm Fan Liang on the right, and this is my partner, Rupam on the left. I live in Melbourne, Australia, and Rupam lives in Singapore. We work very closely in analyzing good businesses like this, and we do deep dive analysis into the various aspects of the company, industry, and competition. We would like to invite you to join us in our Facebook group. The link is provided here, and a clickable link is also provided in the description below the video. So we keep discussing a lot of interesting businesses and investing concepts in the Facebook group, and we would like to invite you to come and join the discussions. This is why Adyen actually attracts a lot of global big customers that has a lot of global footprint where their payments needs are so complex. So you can see here, pretty sure you recognize, will be able to recognize a lot of different names and are in fact using a lot of their services too. Like Airbnb, Booking.com, Facebook, Spotify, Uber, Expedia, Dropbox. And as we have mentioned, there are many companies here that have exponential revenue growth rate. So when their revenue grow, Adyen's revenue grow with them too. And we'll explain Adyen's pricing model later. Just another slide on the customers which you have seen right at the beginning of this video. Here, one interesting thing is, look at here, we have eBay. So eBay, as some of you would know, actually owns PayPal, where PayPal was spun out from it. So eBay as a marketplace is actually using PayPal as its payments provider. However, in 2018, when one part of the contract expired, eBay actually switched its payments provider from PayPal to Adyen, and that generated a lot of news in the market. Imagine, I mean, your eBay, you own PayPal. If you use PayPal to process your payments, if they make money, you make money too because you basically own PayPal. But, and you know PayPal very well because it used to be part of you. So why would you want to switch to someone else? So that's an interesting point and goes to show that potentially Adyen has something very valuable to offer to people. And on their side, in terms of the whole market trend, unified commerce has been becoming more and more popular. So it's basically omni-channel commerce where you can sell in in-store, online, mobile, or wherever you want, in apps, plus globally. So this just gives a whole unified commerce experience. So think about things like you can, for, Offer as a merchant, you can offer click and collect services where people either buy online or buy in app and then they can collect it in the store. Or think about returns, they can buy online in app and then when they go to the store, they can return. And a smooth process will be that they can probably just show their credit card and then you know that they have actually made that payment without showing the receipt. And money will be refunded straight to that credit card. Right now, a lot of the merchants actually don't have this seamless process in terms of unified commerce experience where they will have to check or check your email and then when they refund you maybe they can't refund you back to the same credit card they will have to refund you through cash or they'll, they'll go through a lot of process and then with unified unified commerce there's also a thing called endless out where you go to the store you look at the stock there maybe they don't have your size but you actually can just make the payment there and then you can get the stock deliver to your home or you can collect it in another store without having to make a payment again because they will recognize you through the whole journey. Then you can do loyalty programs and then just follow through the whole journey of the customer where next time when they come into the shop, you straight away recognize him or her and offer personalized suggestions. So Adyen strength is also on this where it can offer a unified commerce experience to the merchants because it controls all the data across the different channels, across the different market, where everything is integrated on the same technology platform. 
and you just sign one contract across the whole world with one backend to manage all this. So all the data are there, easily processable. And Adyen has a dashboard to show you all these insights. And if you want raw data, they can provide it, you with it too for you to crunch your data to do whatever you want. So a very holistic view of your shoppers for targeted marketing, etc. So in terms of revenues, let's look at how Adyen actually makes money. Adyen makes money from three main revenue streams. The first one is processing fee for authorization, reconciliation, risk management, tokenization, and payout services. So these are fixed fees per transaction. And the fees are contractedly agreed with each of the merchants. So it could be different for different merchants. And for some of the customers, Adyen doesn't provide the full stack payment services and just provide the processing services to these customers. For example, airlines, because airlines have a risky balance sheet and might not be profitable, Adyen doesn't want to take on the underwriting risk. So Adyen doesn't want to act as an acquirer to them where Adyen just want to process the payments for them and then partner with another partner to offer the acquiring services so that they don't take on the risk. The next part of fees is the full stake settlement fees where Adyen actually acts as the acquirer to undertake the settlement risk. And this is charged as a percentage of the transaction value. And this has a higher margins than the processing fees. Next, you have some other small other service revenue like the sales of point of sales devices or Forex, foreign exchange service fees and the party income. So let's look at how the money actually flows. As a shopper, maybe when you shop something, you pay 100 euro to buy a product. And then different parties in the whole chain would have to take out some fees from it. So the acquirer, which could be a bank, well, sorry, the issuer, which is the bank holding your credit card or issuing you the credit card or debit card would charge an interchange fee. Let's call it 1% now. So that issuer would take one euro out from the $100. And then all these payments data usually have to go through the card networks like Visa or MasterCard. So they would take another, say 0.5%, so 50 cents in this case, as their card scheme fees. And then Adyen would also take a cut on both the processing fee and also the settlement fees. And it's usually charged as a markup to the interchange fee. So it's adopting a cost price pricing model. So in 2019, Adyen's take rate is about 0.21%. In this example, it's 2.0. 0.26, so Adyen is taking 26 cents out from this transaction. So after everyone takes a cut, the merchant actually just gets 98, about 98 euros. Now, if you look at the markets itself, the electronic payments market is very huge at more than 23 trillion. I mean, 22 trillion was in 2017, so it's bigger now. And Adyen was processing about 100 billion back then, so less than 1% of the market. And there are a lot of growth in this market where it was expected to grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 10% from 2017 to 2026. Because there are a lot of tailwinds, I mean, you see digitization, people using more cashless payment methods than cash, and also globalization stimulating more cross border payments. So Adyen doesn't operate in the full electronic payments industry, but it, a big part of it is online. And online can be targeting quite diff many different markets. So we can see here, a lot of the growth was projected in the future to come from traditional e-commerce and sharing economy and online gambling, food delivery. And in terms of the market size, the bigger ones are the traditional e-commerce, travel, you pay, B2B and sharing economy. And as you can see here, Adyen actually has customers in most of these markets. So Adyen is quite diversified and it has customers in high growth markets like e-commerce where it signs up Wix, SC, eBay, Alibaba, and sharing economy is dealing with Airbnb, Uber, Grab, and all four. So this is good news for Adyen having a high market tailwind and runway. So now you'll be wondering with payments industries being so lucrative, 
how many people are there like there are so many probably you have known and what's different across all of them and in different markets there are basically like hundreds or thousands of companies and here is just a very high level broad overview of the payments landscape where you can see you have payment methods you have gateway acquirer processor network issuer some of them operate in some of the areas some of them operate in a few areas and like alipay operates the whole chain even skipping the card network so it's very complex here and we'll go into more detail of all these players because you actually take quite some time to explain this in the detailed research series and to basically show you how different are, are each of these and some of you would have recognized that you see the modern players which are some of the popular hot stocks now like square stripe is a private company but it's very popular too then you have adyen and wirecard which just went bankrupt or is in deep trouble now and then paypal which is pretty strong throughout these periods so but overall as of now as adyen has told us to to and to all the investors right now globally there's no global payment service provider that accepts so much payments as Adyen and Adyen is really in the leading forefront and is the only modern player there. So through our research, we have also found another competitor called PPRO, which we are going into detail in our research series. If you have enjoyed this video, do hit the like button and remember to subscribe to our channel as we keep posting about interesting companies from time to time. Do also check out our full research series where we discuss these businesses in great detail. And you can find the clickable link in the descriptions below this video. Thank you very much for your time and see you in our next video.